This is a continuation of our cir circular force, and this time we're talking about Newton's law of universal gravitation. So what is Newton's law of universal gravitation? Law of universal gravitation, like any law, Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration, his universal gravitational law can be expressed as an equation. It's that the force of gravity is equal to big G, m1, m2, over r squared. So what we're saying here is that there's some sort of gravitational constant. So this is a constant. This is a proportionality constant. And big G's value is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, which is a pretty small number, really. And its units are newtons meters squared over kilograms squared. Now, what we're going to find is that the function of the units for a lot of our numbers like this is just to cancel everything else out. So it's going to cancel out the meters for our radius in each of our kilograms so that we're left with newtons, which is the answer we want our force to be in. So don't worry too much about all those icky units. Really focus on the number. That's really what you want to focus on. But G is always, because it's the universal gravitational constant, it is always... 16 or 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. The two m's are the mass of the two objects. Any two objects with mass are attracted to each other gravitationally. And this r is the distance between them. It is the center to center distance between the two objects. So that's the center to center distance between the two objects. So it's from like the center of the earth to the center of the sun, or something like that. So like we said before, gravitational attraction, dra gravitational force, law of universal gravitation, happens between any two objects that have mass. So a boy and a girl, they have mass. Let's say they are separated by 0.5 meters. Okay, that's pretty close. That's like half a meter stick. So let's see what kind of attraction that is. That's Fg is equal to big G m1 m2 over r squared. So we have Fg is equal to 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. So notice we're always using that number. The mass of the boy, 80. The mass of the girl, 60. Divided by... 0.5 squared, don't forget to square that, and that comes out to, that comes out to 1.28 times 10 to the minus, newtons, that's 1.28 micronewtons, ladies and gentlemen, that is a force that you can resist. It is not an irresistible force. And if this chick gets any skinnier, that force is going to decrease, not increase. So what if instead we wanted to find the gravitational force between the Earth and the Sun? Okay, because the Earth and the Sun have gravity. They exert a force on it. The sun pulls the earth in. The earth also pulls the sun. Action, reaction. So, But those forces are equal and opposite, opposite. So we calculate it the same way. Fg equals 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. The mass of the earth is 5.97 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. That is not a number you need to memorize. It would be given to you. The mass of the sun is 1.99 times 10 to the 30th kilograms. Again, not a number you need to memorize. Distance between them is 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters. We need to make sure that we square that. So when we crunch all those numbers, we get 
3.52 times 10 to the 22nd newtons. Now that's a lot larger force than we had before. Let's see if that answer is reasonable. You know, it's always good to kind of use your laws of exponents to see if your answer is reasonable. So we had 10 to the negative 11. We're only going to look at the 10 to this times 10 to the 24th times 10 to the 30th divided by 10 to the 11th squared. So laws of exponents on the bottom, that would become 10 to the 22nd because you multiply those two. On the top, we have negative 11 plus 24 plus 30. So that's 54 minus 11, 10 to the 43rd. When you divide, you subtract your exponents. So 43 minus 22 is 21. So we should have gotten some on the order of 10 to the 21. We got 10 to the 22. So those are very similar numbers. So that is a reasonable answer for our force. So we can see that your gravitational force can be small, like in the micronewtons between the boy and the girl, or it can be very large, like the 10 to the 22nd for the Earth and the Sun. So we know that our Earth orbits our Sun, and it goes around in a circle. So just like from our last chapter, we, or last section, we were talking about universal or circular motion, there has to be some force, some centripetal force, that's pulling the Earth into a circle. Otherwise, this Earth would just go off on this tangent line here, and that's not going to work. So there's some centripetal force. Well, guess what's providing that centripetal force? That's gravity. So our centripetal force is also our gravitational force. Same thing. So we could actually, from the number we just calculated for our gravitational force, we could find out how fast the Earth is going around the Sun. So we can take mv squared over r, and that's going to equal that centripetal force that we just calculated. So that equals the 3.52 times 10 to the 22nd that we had from the last calculation. So now we know the mass of the Earth. Again, it's not something we need to memorize. 5.97 times 10 to the 24th, it will be given to us. V squared divided by 1.5 times 10 to the 11th, the distance between the Earth and the Sun, is equal to 3.52 times 10 to the 22nd. So solving for V, we now get so that will give us a velocity of 2.97 times 10 to the 5th, 4th, 10 to the 4th, sorry about that, 10 to the 4th meters per second, or 29,700 meters in one second. That's how fast the Earth goes around the Sun. So let's explore that idea that the centripetal force is provided only by the force of gravity. So centripetal force mv squared over r is equal to big G m1 m2 over R squared. And those both terms have an R on the bottom, so this R can cancel and one of these is gone. And then remember this M, the centripetal force is on the outside object. So that's the outside object. And one of these is the outside, and one of them is the inside object or the central object. Okay, so m1 and this m are the same mass, and so they too can cancel out, which leaves us v squared equals g m2 over r, 
we're solving for v, we get v equals the square root of g, and a lot of times we write big M, because a lot of times the center thing is a big object. So this is our center object, the thing that's being orbited, divided by, again, the center to center distance between them. Now what we've just calculated here is the orbiting speed. This is our orbiting speed or it is our escape velocity. In order to escape the orbit of a planet, one has to go faster than this calculated velocity. Okay, last example. How fast does a satellite need to go in order to maintain a, an orbit 100 kilometers above the Earth's surface? Now here's the tricky part. Here's our satellite up here. We're talking 100 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Okay, we need to standardize our units, so that becomes 100,000 meters. Don't forget to convert your kilometers to meters. Now we have a second problem, and that is this. We need the center to center distance. So the radius of the earth the radius of the earth is 6.4 times 10 to the 6th meters. So in order to get that center to center distance, we need to add 100,000 to that. And so that becomes 6.5 times 10 to the 6 meters. So when we put that into our velocity equation, square root of g m over r, okay, notice in our problem it doesn't give us the mass of the satellite. That's because remember that this mass is the mass of the center object. And in this case, that's the Earth. So when we go to solve this problem, we go v equals the square root of 6.67 times 10 to the 11 times the maths of the earth, 5.97 times 10 to the 24th, divided by, okay, this is our radius. Remember, we need the center to center distance from the center of the earth to the center of the satellite, not how far it is above the ground. So divided by 6.5 times 10 to the 6 meters. And so when we solve that, we get this comes out to 7827 meters per second. So a satellite orbiting the Earth has to go over 7,000, almost 8,000 meters in one second. That's almost 8 kilometers in one second. So in this case here, if our satellite was going any faster than 7,827 meters per second, then it would no longer be in orbit and it would fly off into space. Or if it was going any slower than the 7,827 meters per second, it would start to fall into the Earth. And this is how some satellites actually end up falling down into Earth and falling out of orbit. So that's it. Good luck, and I'll see you tomorrow.